The truck is moving. There is so much stuff happening. Everything, everything's sealed now. Carbon dip. Oh yeah, those are dirty birds. Hey, what's up guys? We are back and we're here with another Final Frontier episode. We're going to go through the inside of the truck and kind of see what needs to be done, what needs to be completed in there. All the updates that Morgan and the boys over here at MCD1 have done. We're also going to talk about some of the cool stuff that's going to be going in there. Some electronic equipment. Morgan's going to take us through that. And I'm actually going to hand it off to my boy right here. I think we talked about it before, but the truck's in a different layout in the shop. It's out of the corner in the little dungeon back there. I think the second or third week of August, we want this thing out of here to go to wiring. So I'm gonna kinda talk about the sheet metal. That's something that got drug on through multiple episodes that needed to be done. These were our trouble panels here. These were the voids that were long overdue for getting done. That's what I was talking about with drug out, is just, uh, I avoided doing those just because they were complicated and I had to package it with the seat in there. Uh, it's just something that I needed to do specifically. The tricky part with this truck in general and, and the chassis and the sheet metal packaging is there's not enough room where you can have excess sheet metal. Everything has to be tight to something and like away from the seats or you know favoring different areas. So just getting that tunnel in for the exhaust, step up, everything, everything's sealed now. That's done on both sides and then I've got about three quarters of this thing welded. I've been logging my hours. I don't know like exactly offhand, but the other thing that I thought was fun to do, I don't know if you saw this, James. I've been saving the TIG rods specifically from the inside of the truck. So each one of those is a three footer. Damn. So I'm gonna do the math at the end, just to see, just for fun, to see how many hours it took. You know, someone, cause the classic thing is like, oh my God, that's so much welding. Like how much welding is that gonna be? Yeah. And I estimated 20 hours, but it's not. It's, it's like 40 hours. Wow. Cause I've already put 20 into it, easy. Oh my so God. we're uh, we're close. Like you can see all the all the passenger footwell, you know, like everything. So I mean, look at this right here. Dude. All of the seam body body to uh, you know our sheet metal is all in. Everything is completely sealed. Yeah. So we're in a good spot now. There is areas like you're gonna go. Well, how does it all get sealed like this? That's a pretty gnarly little guy there. So once this thing gets back from powder. We're gonna just use like a 3M body sealer uh, and get get all the areas just so we're not getting like water in there. Like if you go through a puddle, it's not splashing up. Right. We're, we're just gonna try to maximize, t you know, sealing everything. We are running a full Holly package on this thing, so there will be just one Holly display. You will have a Switch Pros, a 16 button Switch Pros. I think we're gonna try to mount that thing up here. Okay. Uh, I know James was, was really geeking on having some kind of upper Aircraft. buttons. Yeah, you want to go. I, just, I, I feel like I feel hot rod aircraft vibes in here. Good. I feel the need, the need for speed. We're gonna have one. I would call it a pod, right? So instead of this whole thing being a big instrument panel dash, we'll have one pod that'll just have his display, so the Holly display, which is digital. And then we're gonna have an analog uh, fuel gauge, like an auto meter fuel gauge, yeah. just a little two and five eighths or two and three eighths or whatever those things are. And then James just wants to run a tablet with what app is yeah, that? Yeah, we're gonna be, so I'm planning on running just like an, an iPad off here and I'm gonna be running the Onyx app. We've been working with those guys for a while and their app is freaking awesome for navigation. It's definitely gonna be the future. So we're gonna be running hard with those guys and have a bunch of cool events coming up with them too, so. Yeah, Onyx, man. So, Onyx on a tablet, just on, I don't think it needs a pod. It just needs some kind of clever clamping, maybe something that, that can be adjustable where you can move it towards the passenger or maybe even angle it towards the driver, just depending on who's in here. The other thing is we do want to have a e-brake handle. So I'll be putting a, um, just a standard e-brake in here next to this thing. So you'll be able to grab here. You will have to reach over from the shifter and grab it. It's not a huge thing, super tight already. And then we also have PCI setup. So yes. all four occupants are going to run headsets, PCI headsets. There'll be a PCI race radio and intercom. And that will have to have a home. I, I think there'll be something here to mount. And we'll also have to have like the computer and stuff mounted. So it might turn into like being a pod here. Okay. Just to cover if it turns into just being a bunch of busy, ugly electronics, then we'll just put Maybe something. We'll figure a way to. Yeah, just okay. cover it up. Well, I'm, I'm excited. I have, I've actually yet to see 
the PCI stuff. Pretty stoked on working with PCI, you guys. They're obviously Baja legends with, um, you know, Scott Steinberger and his dad, the weatherman, known as Weatherman. You guys probably seen him in like the old Dust of Glory documentary. It's a freaking awesome story with that family. Super deep into communications and just really proud to be rocking their stuff. That's been, you know, the legendary kind of race radio that I grew up on and um, I've had in a vehicle before. And I just, I think that that's a, for all the vehicles in, in my shop, that's what they run. So it just makes sense to, to set James up with the same situation. So we can actually check that stuff out. Before we do that, things to expect will be fully welded interior and then full panels on the rear. James also dropped off some OEM Nissan stuff. So yes. I'm gonna wanna check that stuff out too. There's one item. There it is, dude. So factory. This is, dude, this is actually pretty damn heavy. I don't yeah. remember it being this heavy. And I was telling Morgan, cause Morgan wanted to build something, which I thought was awesome. And I'm sure it would be incredible. But I was telling them that these stock tailgates kind of look cool because they have all these like details into them. And of course, it says Frontier. You're gonna have to probably take the the V6 out of there. Maybe like I'll just XB, take a LT9. you just take a sharpie, dude, and just blast right there. Boom, there dude, is, you're dude. in there. There it is, dude. Yeah. So James is right. This thing's really heavy. It's just got all the internals for like the latch mechanism. We'll probably keep that stuff, but just bail on the actual internals. Obviously, this thing is it's skin, so it's got an outer skin, and then it's got all the inside juice. I think for the shapes that this thing presents, widening it per side is the ticket. I think that we we just figure out the width on our rear glass and where the taillights are, and then you know use the top sheet of this thing, and then add extensions. Uh, make sure they're rigid and they're structured, but we just we just tie that whole thing in. So like this shape can just stay here, and it doesn't need to be wider. And then we can just actually extend yeah. the the regular arch skin the whole thing so it's just on like Zeus buttons yeah and the other thing I think what's gonna have to happen with this is now that I remember the tires are probably gonna have it's gonna have like a notch like a big-ass notch in part of it where the where the tires are gonna clear yeah right so, yeah because we're running a bigger tire so yeah dude it's we actually thought we were gonna do a uh, maybe a, like a radius bend right for the whole thing yeah the whole thing will have to be radius to clear some so, but I think this is cool to end, since it ends like this, I think, yeah, you just kind of filling that in would, I don't even think we need to do any of these other details. I think it's already there. Uh, yeah, this this is a lot of metal work in here already, and the, the good part about this is like, like these dents, that's already rigidity. So all this stuff, I mean, anytime you start, you start messing with shapes like this, that adds structural rigidity. So I don't have to like bead roll anything there or, nice. or do any of that. Nice. I just want to add on, I'll probably use a little thicker material, like a, maybe like a 14 gauge or something, right. just so it's not gonna distort as much and then box it accordingly. But this this whole thing, the tricky part is I'm probably gonna have to get a little bit of arch in this. So we have this. Uh, the other thing we have, we have door panels. So these are a complete set of four door panels in really good shape. James yeah. has a, I would say like a medium, like a number six gray door panel existing in, in his doors already. I yeah. think that these will work. I know you're opposed to these right now. Yeah. But the fact that they're all complete and they have all the parts and the accessories to them, you know, yeah. that it, it's tricky when you paint door panels and you do like trim paint, especially with like an off-road application. I just don't know if that stuff's gonna last and then you're gonna end up scratches and chips and weird stuff, so. Well, I may still actually, you guys, have my original ones. They might cool. be a little beat up. But I'm gonna bring them anyways, Morgan, and then you could make the decision. For sure. What you wanna do. Yeah. Um, but I'll bring those too. The main stuff we were looking for was the electronics. Exactly. Guys, so, so we got all that stuff, which is cool. We're actually gonna be working with Safecraft. I know we've said that before, but we got one of these guys right here with a quick release. We have the 10 pound fire suppression, and then we're gonna have two five pound bottles. I would always stress running, I mean, you can see that that's a bigger bottle. It's not like your tiny little chingaderas. It, those little bottles, they don't, they don't do it. So it, the bigger you can get, the better with fire suppression. You know, even if it's just a spray bottle, it, it's better to overkill when there's a fire. Yeah. And you know, whatever the difference is, I'm sure it's worth it, dude. You yeah. Know? So this will be a secondary system. There'll be, there'll be an onboard fire suppression, which will have manual, like tethered poles, cable poles. The nozzle will go out to the rear. It'll go into the occupant area and it'll go into the, the uh, engine area. And then these will just be like, if you need to go help someone or if you need to get out of the car and the car's still going, you know, you need to put someone out or the vehicle out, then that's your ticket right there. It's just a quick release. 
and then it's just a bolt-on clamp for whatever diameter tubing you order it for. This is for inch and three quarter or 1.75. So this fits all the chassis on the back of James's truck. Perfect. So w again, where are we putting this guy? Right uh, I here? think we're gonna send it right here. Okay. So I just I, anytime you mount these things, I would always do like a a test, run up and just do an emergency test and mm -hmm. see how the easy they come off. Don't get it in like some of the ways those things are moved, like they have to go out and then up. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot and put it somewhere where you can't get it off. Well, thank you guys. Safecraft, definitely a good investment for the truck, for yourself, for your passengers. Jesus, man. You don't want to freaking get burned. And it's just a great way to uh, protect your investment in your life. Protect your investment in your life. So James's truck is going to be equipped with PCI stuff, just like everything else in here. This is their onboard air. We just set up the front passenger and driver with this thing. It's already been taped just for when we're doing mock-up. Real simple unit. It's all like billet construction, adjustable flow. And then obviously two outlets. So driver, passenger. Do you want to explain every to everybody out there what exactly this thing is and what it does? Yeah, so people, they're usually called a Parker pumper and I think that's just a manufacturer just like you'd call like a Band-Aid a Band-Aid or a Kleenex a Kleenex when that's really a manufacturer but that's just the typical term for it. So it's a fresh air system. Uh, when you're racing, you have a closed helmet and you have air that's feeding into there through a filtration system that's kind of tucked away somewhere. So instead of um, just taking dust over and over and over to the face and you know affecting your breathing, you have this kind of fresh air pumping in that's consistent all the time. And it, it you know it also helps with your lens fogging up stuff like that. I've, I've noticed that if you don't have that stuff going and you have like your visor down, you're going fog city on your lens. So that's one item. And then this is our goodie box. My whole life I grew up, you know, same with James, always seeing like Scott Steinberger's JetBlue pre-runner and uh, Big Bird and a lot of the trucks just when I was younger were all running PCI and I remember like the PCI had a badass feather like trailer too that you see at the races. Yeah. Like their service trailer had like a sick paint job on it or wrap or whatever it was. And always in Baja? Yeah, yeah. Always ready to. Uh, Weatherman was a huge thing. And Rest in peace. But you know, they're working with us on this thing and I'm super stoked. So thank you guys. This is uh, our, our radio. I'm gonna get it out. And then also this is the intercom, the elite four link intercom system. So antennas you guys. There we standard go. Standard issue. You, if you don't have you know, if you don't have the race radio but you just wanna have the look, you just get the antenna deal. Is that how it goes? <laughs> Alright, so anyways, these are the heads up. So just so I can put some of this back in. Standard, like a carbon carbon dip kind of look. Dang, I like that. Yeah. Jim's truck will have four of these. Each occupant has their own headset, and then you'd also have a uh, the the radio and the intercom are, are Bluetooth too, so you can um, you know have tunes going, and then it's noise canceling. So cool. Once the you know if you had to talk to someone else, then that you know your music goes down or same like I've been in like RJ's truck and the um, you know he'll get a phone call and I obviously I'm listening to his conversation but it, it cuts out and then when that phone call is done and it just goes back to, to what you were doing right on thank you PCI again for for working with us on this project it's gonna be really awesome to have your, your reliable radios in that thing but yeah man thanks for making such a sweet ass looking headset I mean that looks really really cool and I think it goes with the look of the truck too Got everything but in the box. Let's let's check this out. Yeah. So obviously everything's in pairs. James and I both have true four seater vehicles. Well, James has like a kind of a four seater, right? Yeah. It's like there's a, four doors. There's four doors and there's four seats. Yeah. You know. Anyways, there's there's the ability to have four occupants in each vehicle. So clearly there's eight headsets here, each thing, uh, line filter, intercom, radio, um, and you got the like breaker breaker. You know, antennas through radios, through intercoms, through headsets. Uh, and then we'll also do for helmets too, we'll just have another, you know, that that's just a receptacle that you plug in from your helmet into the same thing that you plug your headset in. So not a huge deal. And then this is just a push to talk to. Well, I, I'm really stoked on this communication system. It's going to be really cool for me to be able to talk to the kids in the back seat, you know, with, yep. with the, with the headsets on, Hey dad, you're going too slow go faster. You wuss. And communicate you know, or, with others. Yeah, and, and communicate with my friends so they can say, hey, dad, go tell Morgan he's going slow. You know, stuff like huh. that. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, but uh, ultimately, it, it is awesome to have this, especially if you guys have kids, you guys have families, you guys are in the desert. If you guys are in a side-by-side -side or you guys are in another play toy or whatever, it's good to have communications with everybody in the vehicle. Yeah. Stuff happens, they may see something wrong with the vehicle that you may not see, they may see an oncoming person. Communication is key, especially being able to communicate with your friends and all that kind of good stuff out there. If you're gonna be hitting a jump, it's a, obviously a great way to look for spotters. Hey, am I clear, green, go, hey, stop. You know what I mean? We've done a lot of waving in the day. You're good, go, 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 you know, stop. Side by um, sides get up the back side too fast now for the waving to work. Oh my gosh, yeah. it, it, a, lot, a lot of, you know, communications will help save lives, period. So Morgan, uh, as Morgan said, we're gonna be going into a lot more detail when we get into the wiring portion of yep. the truck. We just wanted to share with you guys this really cool thing, what these things look like, what's gonna be going into the truck. Our wiring dude, who we will disclose soon, will be all full, 100% on deck, handling all this stuff. Yeah, so. it'd be an awesome process to see. Yes. So, so thank you guys and uh, thank you for PCI just to uh, support us and you know support my shop. Last thing we need to cover is just the wheel package. Oh my bad Nelson, the rim cap package. Um, no, it's called Spinners. Oh, Spinners, tight. That's a good song, dude. I don't care what anybody says. Ride spinners, I'm ride spinners, they don't stop. Anyways, uh, we're running methods. These are a double standard beadlock wheel. So they're polished right now, or whatever the aluminum finishes, and we're gonna get them coated, along with uh, a lot more parts on the truck. But this might be one of the things we coat first, just so instead of having like the shop mock-up wheel on here and tire, we can have like the actual tire and wheel package. Right. Even if it's raw, just so when it gets on the trailer and it goes to get wired and stuff, it can be on its on its own pair of shoes. Yes, sir. So, the I haven't yeah. looked at these. James hasn't seen these. No, man. This is pretty cool. This is, this is my first set of methods, man. Here's your instruction manual. Okay, cool. I don't ever torque these Go off. fast. Or Shia, check it out. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Those are dirty birds. That's exciting. You just get one? Yeah, just one. Just, <laughs> just one for now, and then uh, we'll see how it goes. We were going to showcase all methods wheels, so we are just going to run one different one per wheel and per spare. I like it. I'm liking this a lot. So it's like an extra opening in there. Yeah. And obviously it, this this perimeter is still hub centric. So hub centric meaning that like the the hub on there, it'll it'll slide on there and it's all it's for strength and it's also for just ease of getting these things lined up. I mean a part of me just wants to keep it like this. I know, but I kinda do too, dude. I'm really feeling I should just do the black. Well, well it, how did you that, have it before? That's the old the old way I had it with the black. Then wheel. we do gloss black. That's yeah. that. I think I just got to do it, guys. Okay, what do you think? I like the black. I think that's cool. I think yeah. if we keep to your roots, you know, and do do what we can to keep the legacy alive, even with modern parts. So, yeah. you know, they're beautiful wheels regardless. Yeah. And the black will be black. Super stoked to be working with Method, guys. You guys know we've been working with Method Race Wheels for some time. They've believed in our program and a lot of things that we've been doing. It's awesome. Super honored. Thank you guys for believing in all the things that we do and all the events and all the shenanigans and uh, supporting the Built to Destroy series and all yeah. that great stuff. And what, Akia? Okay, go for it. Say, and we believe in them, too, because you wouldn't put it on your truck if you didn't. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to beat the absolute <laughs> out of these rims. Unfortunately, so Me method's gonna definitely go through a test. With these yeah, things. I mean, if you need to get replacements, we could run the polish on the replacement. The polish, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I think these things will hold up, man. I, I, do too. I think they're gonna hold up very, very good. Well, thank you guys so much for checking out this episode. Lots of updates, lots of things going on. The truck is moving. There is so much stuff happening these next couple weeks. Right now, next steps I'm looking at is getting my transmission back from Colhane. It's gonna be pretty soon here. Motor is almost done. Uh, at Michael Cox shop, which is Bronco Factory, running the AFR heads. We're actually doing an awesome motor series on that, right, Morgan? Yep. It's going to be awesome. We have a bunch of episodes and information coming about uh, coming out about the motor series and the motors we're running. You guys will get all the good details in there. We're also going to be covering some assembly in that, so that should be coming out actually pretty soon. Thank you guys for checking out the episode. We will see you and like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. It helps our channel grow. Appreciate it. Later, guys. Bye.